Hello my bookworms, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Sydney and today I have a thrilling book haul for you. If you happen to be new here, please do consider subscribing down below. I put out new videos every single week that I'm sure you don't want to miss. And as always, I have my social media links down in the description as well. Now, today's video is very exciting because not only is it another book haul, but it is a themed book haul, which is thrillers and mystery, murder mystery, whatever these are considered. Now, me as a person, I haven't really gotten into the thriller genre very much thus far in my reading career. So I went over to Twitter and asked you guys what your favorite thriller book was. And so I took 10 of those suggestions and then I went and bought them. So now I will be reading them throughout this next year and diving just a little bit more into the thriller genre, which I'm very excited about. The first book that I'll talk about is The Night Swim by Megan Golden. And this book caught my attention right away because one of the scariest things for me is the idea of drowning. Like you will never catch me on a cruise ship because that terrifies me. Being on a big open water without being able to see land, like no exit in sight, that's terrifying. No thank you. So when I saw that this thriller had a body of water on it, I was like, okay, that would probably scare me. Now, I don't know if like this body of water will be a plot point in the story in a sense of like a action scene, you know, but like the idea of it, like possibly being in the story is scary to me, so let's read it. The catch line of this book is a true crime podcast host covering a controversial trial finds herself drawn deep into a small town's dark past and a brutal crime that took place three years before. It says, a local golden boy, a swimmer destined for Olympic greatness, has been accused of raping the beloved granddaughter of the police chief. And our main character is Rachel, who is the host of the podcast that was mentioned. And now Rachel is throwing herself into this investigation, but she keeps getting mysterious letters on her windshield, and it feels like someone is following her. The official story is that Jenny Stills tragically drowned, but the letters insist that she was murdered. And when Rachel starts asking questions, nobody in the town wants to answer, the past and present start to collide as she uncovers startling connections and a revelation that will change the course of the trial and the lives of everyone involved. The idea of a small town crime sounds really interesting because normally in small towns, like everyone is really close knit and no one wants to kind of like give up anyone else in the town. So it adds like another aggravating layer of intrigue to the story. So this sounds really interesting and I hear good things about it. I know Kayla from Books and Lala really liked this book. So that's promising because I trust her tastes to begin with. The next book that I got is Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. This is one that I would have never guessed was a thriller just by the cover for whatever reason. I don't know, it just doesn't strike me as a mystery thriller. I mean, like maybe the title, like Truly Devious, like I get it, but I just wouldn't have guessed. And we know I love a good catchphrase and when it rhymes, I'm just a sucker for it. So this one says, look, a riddle, time for fun. Should we use a rope or a gun? That's terrifying. <laughs> Basically in the story, we have Ellingham whose wife and daughter were kidnapped. The only clue was a mocking riddle listing methods of murder signed with the frightening pseudonym Truly Devious. Their disappearance became one of the great unsolved crimes in history. And many years later, true crime aficionado Stevie Bell is set to begin her first year at the Ellingham Academy and she is determined to solve this cold case. And Truly Devious has made a surprise return. The past has crawled out of its grave and someone has gotten away with murder. And this is a trilogy, so I am not sure how I feel about the fact that it won't be wrapped up in this book, that I'll have to continue a series, which could be interesting because we know I like good series, but also, I mean, I know that it's gonna end in a huge cliffhanger and we'll just see how it goes. Isn't Stevie Bell the character from Schitt's Creek? Isn't, I know her name's Stevie, is Bell her last name? Oh, Bud, isn't it Bud? Oh, Stevie Bud. Okay, never mind. We're good, we're fine. The idea of having like a cold case and it being like the one of the biggest unsolved crimes in history is super intriguing to me. So I'm very interested to see how this book goes. I just know that I'm gonna picture the main character Stevie as Stevie Bud from Schitt's Creek and I'm not mad about it. All right, the next one that was recommended to me was One of Us is Lying by Karen M. McManus. And this one I think is pitched to me as The Breakfast Club meets Murder Mystery. And I'm not entirely sure how I feel about it because I do love The Breakfast Club so much. It's a great movie, it's a classic, but I don't know how I feel about it being like reimagined. So we'll see how it goes. I mean, it does sound pretty interesting. It says, 
On Monday afternoon, five students at Bayview High walk into detention. The brain, the beauty, the criminal, the athlete, and the outcast. Only, the outcast never makes it out of the classroom. Before the end of detention, Simon, the outcast, is dead. And according to investigators, his death wasn't an accident. On Monday, he died, but on Tuesday, he planned to post juicy reveals about all four of his high-profile classmates which makes all four of them suspects in his murder. Or are they just the perfect patsies for a killer who's still on the loose? Oh, that actually sounds really interesting. I didn't remember reading the part that he like had planned the reveals after he was dead. So that's crazy. Okay. Okay, that sounds really interesting. Um, and there's a sequel to it. So I don't know if it's gonna wrap up in this book like this mystery and then the next book is like a separate mystery in the same setting, which I hope that's the case because I just, I like thrillers when they are like a concise book. That's what I prefer. Um, like I've read a whole lot, like I know what I'm talking about. But yeah, I mean, this actually does sound pretty interesting now that I've actually read the whole synopsis. <laughs> The next one that was recommended is Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. And this one has been very popular around booktube, so I'm sure you're not surprised to see it on this list, but I am excited to pick it up. Because obviously I chose it for one of my book of the month purchases, and this cover is just really, really beautiful. All of this green, it's spooky. And to my understanding, this book is like a house paranormal ghost thriller story. <laughs> And in this story, we have Maggie Holt, who 25 years ago, she and her parents, Ewan and Ewan, moved into Bainbury Hall, a rambling Victorian estate in the Vermont woods. They spent 20 days there before fleeing in the dead of night. And Maggie's father wrote a horror memoir called The House of Horrors in this book, which basically put their family on the map and now they're like basically famous. And Maggie is now living in the shadow of her father. But when her father died, she inherited the Bainbury Hall. So she is returning there to kind of renovate it and prepare it for sale. Now, Maggie has always been a non-believer. Like she didn't really believe in all of the things that her, her father wrote about in the book. But as she's renovating the house, she starts to experience some of the things that he wrote about. So she's starting to see that some of it is more fact than fiction. Oh, and in this book, I guess it flips between the current story with Maggie and passages from her father's book. So that's really cool. I like that idea. It says, Home Before Dark is a story of a house with long buried secrets and a woman's quest to uncover them, even if the truth is far more terrifying than any haunting. So yeah, that sounds really interesting. I really enjoy the idea of it flipping between two different kind of storylines simultaneously. And I've heard so many good things about this book, so I'm really excited to pick it up. The next book that I have is The Best Lies by Sarah Liu, and this one caught my attention right away. I just thought that the cover was really, really pretty and captivating right away. Uh, I saw it on Kayla from Books and Lala's page, and the, the synopsis on the back is really short, and I don't think that I could do any better, so I'm just gonna read it really quick. Remy Sai used to know how her story would turn out, but now she doesn't even know what tomorrow will look like. She was happy once. Remy had her boyfriend Jack and Elise, her best friend, her soulmate, who understood her better than anyone else in the world. But now Jack is dead, shot through the chest, and it was Elise who pulled the trigger. Was it self-defense or something deeper, darker than anything Remy could have imagined? As the police investigate, Remy does the same, sifting through her own memories, looking for a scrap of truth that could save the friendships that mean everything to her. Told in alternating timelines, this twisted psychological thriller explores the dark side of obsessive friendship. The idea behind this story just sounds really intriguing to me because it's kind of a situation where people really aren't all that they seem. Like, her best friend could have killed her boyfriend, like, but it also couldn't be that at all, and obviously that's what we'll figure out in the story. So just the obsessive aspect of it, the psychological thriller aspect, it just sounds really intriguing and like it could be a wild ride. The next book I have heard so many mixed reviews on, but it sounds intriguing to me, so I went ahead and bought it, and that is The Guest List by Lucy Foley. And in this story, we are all gathered on a remote island off the coast of Ireland to celebrate the wedding of Jules Keegan and Will Slater. And it says, perfection is for plans and people are all too human. It's not long after the cake is cut and the champagne popped that resentments and petty jealousies come out. Worse yet, the latest barometer reading shows the weather has shifted from fair to changeable and dark clouds are looming overhead. Everyone on the island has a secret, everyone has a motive, and someone won't leave this wedding alive. It's giving me real big like clue vibes, you know? Like everyone is in one house and one location, someone turns up dead and then everyone's like, it's the candle in the bathroom with the rope. I don't know. You know, it's that type of thing. That's the vibe it's giving me and I'm not mad about it. I think that it could be really good um, I really like that it's set on a remote island off of Ireland. That sounds cool. So, I mean, I don't know. Sounds cool to me. The next one that was recommended that I had never heard of before 
it was recommended was What Lies Between Us by John Mars and this tweet actually got like quite a few like hearts, likes, you know, like other people agreed with it. And the synopsis on the back also is pretty short, so I'm just gonna read it to you. Catchphrase is, Nina can never forgive Maggie for what she did, and she can never let her leave. They say every house has its secrets, and the house that Maggie and Nina have shared for so long is no different, except that these secrets are not buried in the past. Every other night, Maggie and Nina have dinner together. When they are finished, Nina helps Maggie back to her room in the attic, and into the heavy chain that keeps her there. Because Maggie has done things to Nina that can never be forgiven, and now she is paying the price. But there are many things about the past that Nina doesn't know, and Maggie is going to keep it that way, even if it kills her. Because in this house, the truth is more dangerous than lies. It sounds pretty crazy to me, like keeping someone chained up in your attic for their entire life. Yeah, that's pretty uh, psychopathic, if you ask me. Sounds like it could be a really crazy story. I want to know what Maggie did. I want to know what the secrets are. So that's what I'm gonna find out in these pages, I suppose. And I think John Mars is also the author of The One, if I'm not mistaken. And that's another one that I want to read. And I will in 2021. Um, spoiler alert. Stay tuned for that announcement, I suppose. The next one on this list is The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. And this doesn't have a synopsis anywhere. So let's go to Goodreads. Okay, so it says that our main character, Rowan, decides to take a live-in nannying post with a staggering generous salary. What she doesn't know is that she's stepping into a nightmare, one that will end with a child dead and herself in prison awaiting trial for murder. <laughs> it says like weird things happen all the time in the house, like there was constant surveillance from the cameras installed around the house or the malfunctioning technology that woke the house with booming music or the lights turning off at the worst times and the girls that they are nannying are actually not the model children that she met in the interview and now she's sitting in a cell waiting for her trial. She knows that she didn't commit the murder which means someone else did. This is another one that people have either, either loved or hated. I have to say I'm not a huge fan of this metallic cover. Kind of hurts my head a little bit. The fact that the parents leave the nanny alone with the children for like weeks at a time like something's up. Something's happening. Someone killed one or both of the children, at least one of them. I don't know. And I have never read a Ruth Ware. I've never read any of these authors really. So I'm excited to try it out. And if I like it, then I'll check out her other books too. The next one that was recommended is Behind Closed Doors by B.A. Paris. This was another one that I had never heard of. I'd never seen anyone talk about here in booktube. So I kind of checked it out right away and it sounds like a really commonplace psychological thriller, which are sometimes I feel like might be my favorite because it's like, it's something that could happen to anybody, those types of things. Basically in the story, we have a couple named Jack and Grace and they are like the picture perfect couple. He is a dedicated attorney who has never lost a case and she is a flawless homemaker, masterful gardener and cook and dotes on her disabled younger sister. But it's difficult because you realize Jack and Grace are inseparable. Some might call this true love. Others might wonder why Grace never answers the phone or why she can never meet for coffee even though she doesn't work. How can she cook such elaborate meals but remain so slim? Or why she never seems to take anything with her when she leaves the house, house, not even a pen? Or why there are such high security metal shutters on all the downstairs windows? Some might wonder what's really going on once the dinner party is over and the front door is closed. Sounds like abuse to me. I don't know, Some, that's, my, that's my guess, that's my theory. Um, right off the bat. You heard it here first, but it's pretty quick. It's 293 pages and the font is super big. So it seems like it would be a pretty quick read. And I don't know, just something about that synopsis really makes me feel like I would be scared of this book. So let's read it, right? Okay, the last one, the very last one, no one actually tweeted about. No one actually recommended it to me, but I know that Kat from Paperback Dreams loves Karen Slaughter and she recommended that if you were to start with a Karen Slaughter book, she would recommend The Good Daughter. So that's what I got. The catchphrase of this book is, two girls are forced into the woods at gunpoint. One runs for her life, one is left behind. Sounds like a Law & Order episode. So basically in this story, what I'm gathering is that 28 years ago, Charlotte and Samantha Quinn live in a happy small town family life, but one night someone attacked their family in the home, which left their mother dead and their father the town's notorious defense attorney devastated. And that night basically resulted in a bunch of questions of like, what really happened? Why did this happen? That type of thing. And now Charlie has followed in her father's footsteps and become a lore herself. But violence comes to Pikeville, the small town. Again, Charlie is plunged into a nightmare. Not only is she the first witness on the scene, 
but it is a case that unleashes the terrible memories she spent so long trying to suppress because the shocking truth about the crime that destroyed her family nearly 30 years ago won't stay buried forever. This family's got some secrets, that's what I'm gathering. And from what I hear, Karen Slaughter does a really good job at writing thrillers. I hear that they are pretty brutal and graphic. Uh, I know her other stories are even more graphic on like more touching topics, more like triggering topics, I guess. And this one, from what I hear, is one of her like least triggering books. So we're gonna try this one. We're gonna see if I like her writing style and that type of thing. So these are the 10 thriller books that I will be reading. And I look forward to diving deeper into this genre while being sweaty and anxious and reading these books. But that is all that I have for you today. So if you are still watching, leave the emoji that's like that, like screaming, you know, because it's a thriller haul, what's up? But don't forget to subscribe down below, like the video. I appreciate your support. And as always, be kind to one another and happy reading.